Today, I'd like to talk to you about a paradox of wonders. So let's start with some wonders. For example, have you ever found yourself wondering things like, why is it so hard for a group of friends to order a pizza? Or why is it so hard to pass legislation? Or maybe why do some good businesses fail while bad businesses succeed? There may be many answers to these questions, but one thing they all have in common is that they're examples of times when we gather in individual opinions and try to come up with a single larger decision. This makes them part of a field called social choice theory, where we study methods of group decision making from a collection of individual preferences, trying to make good group decisions. And as you've noticed, making good group decisions can be hard. So today I wanted to walk you through a small example to help show exactly why that is, but more importantly, why it's worth it. For our simple scenario, let's imagine that someone locked in a dark place somewhere has a lot of time on their hands and creates a game out of placing gems in an urn. Here, our dark place is a cave and our someone is a genie. Half of the time, the genie places five blue gems in the urn and the other half of the time, he places four blue gems and one orange gem in the urn. To distinguish between these two scenarios, we'll call the former configuration the all blue urn, abbreviated ABU, and the latter the indigo and grapefruit one, abbreviated IAGO. To turn this scenario into a game, the genie selects which type of urn to create and places the urn in the cave. When a brave player decides to enter the cave, they come to the urn, pick up a gem, and look at it. After looking at this single gem, the player needs to guess which urn is present in the cave, either the ABU or IAGO. If the player guesses correctly, they win a fabulous prize, or maybe I should say a major award. Assuming that we want to win fabulous prizes, what strategy can we employ to win as often as possible? To think through this game, I'd like to use what's called an area model, which starts with a square of side length one and helps us visualize probabilities based on how large of an area they occupy within the square. Because half of the time we have the all blue urn, we split our square in half to create two rectangles within the square, each having area one half. In the case the genie gives us the all blue urn, the only gem we could possibly pick is a blue one. On the other hand, if we're given the indigo and grapefruit one, there are five cases, four which lead to a blue gem and one that leads to an orange one. Thus we split the rectangle for the indigo and grapefruit scenario into fifths, shading one of them orange and the remaining four blue. Determining the width and height of the rectangles in the Iago case, we put everything together to obtain this completed area model. Looking at our area model, we see that if we select an orange gem, we're guaranteed to be in the indigo and grapefruit case, so we should definitely guess that option. If we see a blue gem, there's a higher probability that the urn we have been given is the all blue urn. This leads us to the optimal strategy. If you see orange, guess Iago, but if you see blue, guess Abu. This strategy is correct 60% of the time, which is better than randomly guessing. On to the team event. Let us now imagine a team of three players is playing the game. As before, the genie will place either the all blue urn or the indigo and grapefruit one in the cave. Our first player will enter the cave and pick up a gem from the urn as before. After looking at the gem, they will put it back into the urn and cast a vote before exiting. The player will not leave any hidden messages or clues for the other players who will repeat this process after them. Once all three players have completed the process, the votes in the voting box will determine the decision of the team based on a simple majority rules election. Using the same techniques as before, let's build an area model that helps us determine all possibilities for what could happen in team play and how frequently they occur. The case where we have the all blue urn is the simplest as there's only one possible outcome here. Each player must see a blue gem in this case. In the indigo and grapefruit one, things get more complicated. So let's walk through one player at a time. 
The first player can see either blue or orange in the 4 to 1 ratio we saw in the individual case, so we first split the Iago rectangle into five pieces, with four blue and one orange. Totally independent of what the first player saw is what the second player sees. Because the first player put their gem back in the urn, the probability of the second player seeing a blue gem is exactly the same as the first player. To represent this in our area model, we will split each of the Iago rectangles into five pieces, four of which represent the second player seeing blue, and one which represents the second player seeing orange. Finally, we repeat this process for the third player, splitting the four Iago rectangles in four to one ratios and breaking them up four pieces for blue and one piece for orange. This leaves us with the visual we have here, showing all possible cases of what could be seen by the team of three players. Now the power of a good area model is that you should be able to gauge for yourself about how likely each scenario is based on its size. But if you're super interested in the exact areas and probabilities of each region, that's easily determined, and I'll show it for a minute here. But back to business. Let's determine the odds of our team winning the major award if each player follows the strategy we talked about in the individual case, the so-called Sea Blue Votaboo strategy. In the case the genie puts the all blue urn in the cave, the team will unanimously vote for the all blue urn. So our team will be right at least half of the time. In the indigo and grapefruit scenario, however, our team will be less fortunate. They will only have enough votes to determine the indigo and grapefruit one if at least two players see an orange gem, which doesn't happen very frequently. There are three regions where two of the three players see orange gems, and one region where all three players see orange gems. Adding in these additional probabilities, we see that our team will be successful 55.2% of the time, which is disappointing. But let's see what happens if we change up the team a little bit. Instead of a team of three players who follow the rules, let's exchange our first player for a rogue player who simply votes Iago every time by pretending they saw an orange gem. Our other two players stay the same. Returning to our area model, in the all blue urn scenario, we now have the rogue player voting for the indigo and grapefruit one but the two other players vote for the all blue urn, keeping the majority and making our team successful in this situation. In the indigo and grapefruit situation, however, things have improved. In essence, there will already be one vote for Iago. So all that is needed now is for either the second or third player to see an orange gem and vote Iago. This leads to two new situations where the team will vote correctly. Additionally, the four scenarios where we previously identified Iago remain correct. Adding together all of these winning areas, we find that our rogue team is actually successful in identifying which urn is present 68% of the time, a better performance than even the individual case. Notice how delicate this situation is. If two of our players go rogue, we'll never be able to identify the all blue urn correctly giving us a maximum win probability of 50%. So what gems can we take away from this? First, the best individual strategy and the best team strategy are not always the same thing. This is something to keep in mind if you ever find yourself wondering, why can't everyone just follow the same set of rules? Second, making good group decisions can involve requiring different actions from different people. The advice we give to some people might even seem counterintuitive or paradoxical, but just because it doesn't make sense to you individually doesn't mean that it doesn't make sense in the grander scheme of things. And last, but certainly not least, is that if you're willing to accept the strangeness of the previous two requirements, remember that we did better as a group than we ever even had a possibility of doing when we acted alone. And that, in my book, is a major award.